All right, hello everyone, and welcome back for the final time today to Mr. Cat. Woo! Mr. Cat! Mr. Cat! All right. Game three. <laughs> Game three of a best of three between Maneski and Warriors Gaming Unity. Warriors taking a very convincing game number one, but Maneski bring it back for game number two, looking like an entirely different crew. We're going to have our beloved Rubik. Currently, there is a Magnus still available for either team, though. Yes, end of the road for one of said teams as well here. Lower bracket, game three. Uh, and yeah, they're they're teasing it. They're like, all right, go ahead, Maneski. See if you can do it. See if you guys can copy face this like we cop. No, I'm just, I don't mean to <laughs> be harsh, but uh, they uh, remove the Ember Spirit this time from WG rather than the Centaur War Runner, guy whose stock has exponentially risen over the time period of Mr. Cat. And uh, well, speaking of faceless, of course, we, we often see the Timber Bando first up against them, but it'll be Maneski. You take it very early on in the draft, seeing the Centaur War Runner and saying, hey, we now have a timber, which means that you can't solo safe lane this centaur, or we will, we're going to wreck him. Or, like, you can't solo off lane him. Like, we can dictate where these lanes go uh, based on this 1v1 of the centaur and uh, the timber Five saw. All right, before this draft gets too heavily underway, just want to plug for all our viewers that are actively watching the major invites. If this game isn't tickling your fancy on Sir Action Slacks' channel, twitch.tv slash Sir Action Slacks, we are doing a live What the Duck podcast on the major invites. So you can watch there, you can chat about the invites, listen to people in the field sharing their opinions. So if that's for you, go ahead, check it out. We'll be popping links in the chat. Now back to Mr. Cat. Yeah, we go. Uh, I mean, while we're here there, though, as you were saying, it's currently Wings, OG, Adfinim, and Team Liquid. So nothing shocking yet. I mean, Adfinim, um, a lot of people are shocked about. I think they performed nah. really... I, you know what? This is a whole topic for the... For the what the People don't know anything, Annie. I mean, that was just... I mean, we know... If you know Valve, you know they're getting invited. doesn't matter if you agree or not. Oh, they're the underdogs. They're the guys everyone's rooting for. Now, I mean, also... they came second at the other major. They, they want to set a precedent for that, so... Doesn't matter if your team hasn't done anything since then, I think. But anyway, as you said, I don't try to get into the mind of Valve. That's a dangerous place. Oh, that's, and that's a very yeah. terrifying place. But yeah, it's it's uh, Slacks, Suns fan, Mott, and Zayori uh, going over the major invites. There's cameras, there's memes. It's fun. So, all right, we got a memes. timber saw. I think both of these teams are probably also tabbed out watching major invites. Yeah, um, I'm sure they are, actually. Um, like, I'm, I'm sure we're going to have, like, pauses every couple of minutes just to go refresh the page and check because that's got to be so nerve-wracking knowing that both of these teams are probably vying for a spot at the major and uh well they're gonna have to battle it out against the guys that are being named right now so we'll yeah, see. see who uh see who's left i mean i'm sure by now they probably realize there's not many direct sea invites so anyone who they can think of an sea will be in the regional qualifiers with both of these teams so so mr cat would you say is a, a training ground for the kiev major absolutely i'm yeah. sure our kiev winner in fact will come from mr cat because it's southeast asian dota and it cool. has more depth than anyone gives it credit for Dude, the crystal maze don't in quote this me region on that are unreal anyway Battlefield. Just Shadow getting fate. banned, second phase. He's here. We got him. Bold. See if uh, WG are as bold as me our earlier game today. The support clockwork, of course, an option there if they want to go for it. But against a timber, already not looking too hot. An ogre, also not so good. So don't expect it. Just your standard Shadow Fiend so far. Uh, didn't want Mineski to steal it away. And it does mean that they likely want to do some shenanigans with their core got or something it. here. Oh, of course. I mean, CM. Love her. Got She's it. the best. Who plays uh, CM? Is it going to be Ninja Boogie or Jules? I would guess Jules. I would think Ninja Boogie is probably an ogre player, but we'll see. I, uh... I'm sure it's one of those kind of mix-up ones, too, depending, because you can kind of... Uh, it depends on what you really need, and there's that mix-up that we're looking for. Actually, that's pretty sick, so that's probably a support Batrider. Um... This is looking real nice for a Warrior's Lifestealer. I wonder why they went with the Bat Rider now, though. Because they'll probably get banned out if they pick the Lifestealer first. I don't think so. I don't think you would naturally assume they're going to go support Bat Rider or support Centaur. Uh, you would think that you would leave the position four for the final pick and uh, just pick a position one now or something like that. But Yeah, I'm feeling, um, feeling the offlane Bat for Centaur. Shaking it up a little bit. It works out pretty well most of the time. Now, we'll see if Life Stealer is going to be the final ban here because I think that's something Warriors definitely have their eye on. Yeah, 
Well, either way, yeah. So it should be uh, support bat, especially with a Nyx Assassin for that pick being brought out. Um, it's it's just too good. So this puts our Timber Saw in like a safe lane position, or, or possibly mid, of course, um, depending on the matchup. With it being a Shadow Fiend, it, it wouldn't be the absolute worst thing. Looks like WG aren't really eyeing that. They uh, take out the TA instead. Someone who uh, definitely needs a lot of damage. Maybe some like burst potential or something, or uh, at least some high mobility from your mid laner from Mineski. Kind of a tough call here. What about that mid Terra Blade I hear so much about? Ah, oh, very common. Yes. Mm. I, I love Terra Blade. You know, mid Terra Blade actually is really good against Alchemist, but no Alx here, Annie. I, we, do you see two slots left? Because I see two slots left. <laughs> <laughs> Just, yeah, there you go. Pick the TB, and then it's they'll the pick Alchemist to the Terror Blade or two last picks. If that happens here, I want a million dollars. Sure. <laughs> you got it. All right. No, I'm going to put you into debt. It's Alk Terror Blade coming up. <laughs> Can't even say that with a straight face. I feel like Maneski, they're thinking long and hard about their ban Lifestealer one that, you know, is, is very popular in the region, synergizes well with the Bat, does good things with the Centaur, but uh, yeah, it has its limits. Got to get all on top of people, take some time to farm up. So warriors might be thinking of something with a little more burst potential. And we'll see. Hmm. This is a bit of a tough one. Yeah, UG's invited. And they'll go with the Slark and take the jug for themselves. So, jug mid. More than likely here. Yep. Could just be the Timber Salt too, though. I mean, where's the damage coming from on Maneski? Like, Juggernaut is going to do a lot, but in the early levels, when Juggernaut's still really farming, you really got to count on that Ogre Magi to get on top of things, because, you know, Timbersaw can do a lot, but he's he's going to have some mana issues at first as well. Although with Crystal Maiden, it might be a little less noticeable. Yeah, he should be okay. Uh, definitely feeling like a lot of the burden comes to him, though. He's going to have to not miss his skills, of course. Timbersaw, a hero that we've seen only certain teams really flourish with. And Maneski hoping to add their name to the list. And uh, WG, the final here. We'll see if they... I mean, they can really do anything. We assume it's position one hero left, but who knows? Maybe we'll get the return of Carry Centaur, guys. Um, but yeah, I, I do think you're right. I think Lifestealer is still relatively fine. I think Sven's actually okay. And Lone Druid will do quite fine, too. This opens up a lot of the rotations for the Rubik and the Bat Rider too. You definitely want a uh, more sustainable safe laner. Is, uh, is it possible this is going to be a mid-Druid safe lane fiend? Or is it... Stick and tried and true. Yeah, I think you just All do right. the lone druid bottom so you can just bully the hell out of this Nyx assassin. Shake it up, Trent. I know. I want it. You know, let's see a mid bat. Let's go back old school style. Centaurs are carry. Rubik's the off laner. Let's go. That's it. That's what we want. Well, in the real world, um, it looks like everything should be fine and dandy here. <laughs> Maneski. I like their draft. I think uh, their most difficult parts of this game probably going to be the Nyx Assassin and uh, what he can get done. Just uh, right at that level 6. He's got the Bat Rider to try and play around with, but it's only a support Bat Rider, so it's not that big of a deal how hard you counter him uh, compared to your typical game. Probably the best way to see Bat Rider these days just because of how potent Nyx is. Makes more sense doing this kind of stuff, so. Immediately smoked up, and look at Jules. Oh, oh, he wants it. They're not going to find each other? They are not. Wow. Whew. Two ships passing in the night there. And they'll hit each other now. Oh, He'll look. <laughs> he's like he still has a ward on him, though, and he should know that uh, that means he didn't plant one. Nana still smoked up. Going to be joining the fray. Dire Ooh. sentry toss down, but won't be finding Jules any. guesses wrong. Yeah. It's over here, big guy. That was a risky sentry, honestly. I'm surprised he went for that. Yeah, I mean, it. I guess it'll help if there's like an early invis rune gank or something. But it's yeah, it seems a little bit unnecessary unless you had vision uh, saying otherwise. Either way, looks like we're just going for a, a standard rune play. No uh, massive invasions going on. We could see maybe Afu and friends get a little bit risky up top, down bottom. We are gonna see Jules and RR make a motion towards bot rune, and they. Probably should be able to find this. Yeah, long enough stun that it should be guaranteed. Xnova could try and make a play. The battle 
Yeah, not worth. <laughs> just yeah. walk away. That's that's a very high risk, low reward play. Now, Centaur War Runner could be in some trouble. Ben gonna stomp everyone up. Ninja Boogie got another freeze up in five seconds. I mean, Crystal Maiden, she is sure slow, and now is out of range of the frostbite. Uh, top lane then, so. As expected, they get this matchup of Timber versus Centaur. This is awful for Centaur. Does not have fun. And uh, that means that you definitely don't need an Ogre there. So he can be mid helping out. But Afu will be doing the same. Not very effective level 1. But level 2 support bat. Much more terrifying. Looks like he won't be back in time to get any stacks going though. It's just so important that he helps Nan out these early Necromastery stacks. Yeah. Jules. But you'd love to be like here and getting something started right now as bat right off that uh, level one spawn. Town in the bottom lane, we haven't really mentioned it. It's just going to be our Solanix assassin going against a lone druid. We've got a Rubik hanging around the wings as well, but I think a lone druid should be able to handle himself in that lane. Might see some, some early Rubik rotations towards the mid. Now Jules is fresh out of mana here. Walks up like he's trying to be all big and threatening, but ends up just taking most of his health. Yeah, I love how Afu's just abusing as much as he can uh, early on before there's any sort of a stick out for Miracle. So he's just like fine with using his whole mana pool. And uh, again, just slowing down Miracle. I mean, you can't last it very easily. It's shocking to me that he has eight last hits considering he was just under like nine Napalm stacks for a while there. Dude, he's 9k. <laughs> well, that's a good point. That, that <laughs> helps. <laughs> yeah, I mean, memes aside... Miracle, the SEA player, is just phenomenally individually skilled at mid and, and core, whatever he feels like doing. So, yeah, he's still sitting back, still has all his regen. It's not feeling too scared of anything. And Jewel's just going to be getting all his mana back with him and going straight back to the grind of somehow winning mid lane against a Shadow Fiend. Yeah, Ogre's a hell of a hero. And now he's level 2, while well, Afu's only level 1. Oh, he can just bully, bully, bully. Doesn't have to worry about the Firefly. I mean... Doing this while it lasts, you know? Yeah, I mean, that Firefly could absolutely destroy him right now. Seven Napalm stacks. You just gotta get that guy to touch a little inch of the Firefly, and he melts. Look how much damage he's taken now. And Nana, he's oh, speedy. Rune. Oh, God, he's so fast. You got him. First blood. Going to our Shadow Fiend Ogre. A little too cocky there. Let himself get stacked up by the Bat Rider. Had that level advantage on him, but not against that Shadow Fiend. Yeah. Almost worth giving away if it wasn't for the uh, <laughs> fact that it's first blood. I mean, you get the bounty rune, you get three heroes. Not too shabby, but it's a uh, well played by WG to get that secured. And Afu will now find himself a stack. It's going to be close. Oh, no, actually, he's fine. Damn, that pull that way is very long. So easy stack there. And once he's level two. Aiming for Afu here. Ben having a fun time as our centaur, almost level four for him. Meanwhile, down bottom, our Nyx assassin. It's going to be level three, so a little bit slow going. Again, Ajit going to get some really nice experience on this lone druid. Able to dip into the jungle, dip into the lane. He is feeling super safe uh, and doesn't necessarily need X Nova babysitting him at all, but they could go for uh, a cheeky play here. RR. Maybe Good job disrupting about... that pull. Oh. Unfortunate, Aji doesn't get that off, but... Yeah, just business as usual. This mid lane with Ogre being such a brat is more fun to watch. What a hero. Oh, they got this done. Is this going to be enough? There's a TP in coming from the Batrider. Uh, Miracle? Not I... respecting the tower. Yeah, and then not the, the respecting armor bonus. anything going on in this situation here. That's an armor increased by one moment right there, guys. That's a tower aura. Armor increased by one. Thank you, tower. But no, that was just... I mean, Juggernaut just went in and spun, but that that's a level two Blade Fury. He had a healing ward, didn't put it up. That's just a little bit of cockiness that really caught up to him now. He was doing so well in terms of last hits in the lane, but he still barely beaten out the uh, the Shadow Fiend. We switched over to net worth, though. Our Shadow Fiend is significantly on top of our Jug. Yeah, uh, three kills, four and a half minutes in, pretty good. Uh, DD Rune also secured up for him. And uh, Afu holding his third point here, deciding who he wants to go and kill now. Might be able to catch a diving dire side in the top lane, especially if Ninja Boogie comes much further. Going for the ben. full long wraparound. Ben's in trouble up top. Hey, there we go. 
I think they want to focus the timber here, and they do. Level one chain. Gonna be close. And, Not uh, close easy. enough. There we go. Afu. Damn. Really having some fun. This guy definitely took his time getting to level two, but now that he's at level three, he's able to really stack up that napalm and actually rein in the kills, that means. Man, I thought he had a better chance there, but just the uh, the speed of Batrider. Really underestimated. Easy. And uh, now he's... Oh, wow. Look at this farm. Oh, Who are we oh this about? is glorious. Afu. He's about to be so rich. Didn't even notice these stacks were happening. No, bless the Centaur Warrunner, honestly, if he was the one who was doing this. Yeah, no, he's he's been dipping it out of lane. I think he's a uh, little guardian angel there for the Bat Rider. Oh, he missed Dude, a stack. I'm serious about this. That one little wild wing has one less stack than everyone else, but look at these guys just boil. That is so much money. Danny Rune 2, and uh, there you go, guys. That's How a blink tag. position for Bat. <laughs> Another bounty rune. There you go. That is uh, more than halfway towards Afu's blink dagger. So, again, a bat rider that started poor as dirt, sitting on level one forever. It's now going to be very mobile very shortly, but Timbersaw just got caught out. He was triangulated and picked off. Easy yeah, where's Gamer on point with the rotations this game? Maybe it's Mineski not respecting the fact that like no one's in mid and stuff, but... Pretty brutal to lose your temper saw twice that early, especially when you're like trying to build into this hood. And we're still just waiting on RR to be able to contribute. Everything shaping up very slowly here at seven minutes in. Let's check our overall net worths, and it's looking it's looking good for our Shadow Fiend. Again, that one kill mid lane as Juggernaut just kind of strolled up to him was super impactful. And we'll see if he's going to build on that or if Juggernaut can redeem himself. Lone Druid as well, just making a lot out of this extra space he's been given. One of those heroes that you can pretty much guarantee to get done what you want in lane and then he'll rotate whenever he feels like it. He doesn't necessarily need to play as part of his team. He can go just split push and solo gank now. Jules goes up, there is going to be that Dire Shrine activated, it's two supports, and there is going to be a TP in from Nyx Assassin as well. Omni Slash flies, but they've got to catch up to Nana. Without Blink Daggers from the Centaur ult, he is out of there. Oh, I'm really trying to get this done with the first Vendetta. Oh, err. Keep going. Have faith. Believe, dude. Oh, he's he believing. He sees it. He's he sees the empty camp. He found it. Rest. Oh. Peace, Nana. That's a feels good, man. That was a very intense Shadow Fiend death sound. And, I mean, it was required. That, yeah, that's that like was... so important for this next set. Look at 417 gold. Miracle. He's double damaged up. There is an ancient stack waiting for him, but I think he'd rather go and do some damage to the structures. Objective gaming. This will come in handy. Man, it's actually like a game-saving vendetta right there. It does so much work for them. Just taking him off the map, slowing down his progression, helping your next assassin so much. Now they probably want to put at least a little bit of focus onto Ajit. Unfortunately, they don't really have the best tower rotators oh, uh, in this game. Saw. All right, he cannot die again. Well, and uh, Bow. Hey, he's got no TP. He has, yeah, he has a TP now. Oh, they're gonna let him live. I guess they think he was too good of a juker, but that's lucky. Yeah, what a player. I didn't think he was. I thought he like left the shop range for a second there and had uh, messed up his backpack thing, but he was a okay. Very well played. But uh, in terms of his rotations, just because of how slowed down the timber saw is, I think there could be some concerns. Whereas uh, you'd love to like rotate down this lane and try and deny it out from this lone druid, but you don't really have that option. Instead, they're trying to pressure in mid, and oh, they'll find Nana. If they can actually secure this kill, that'd be great. Crystal Maiden commits her ult, and that is necessary. Some raises come out, but it's not enough to kill anyone. Even the Death Requiem still leaves Dude, everyone above half players. health. Oh, yeah. Boogie jewels. This is just like last game, where they made that exact same rotation around almost the exact same time. It was just the Disruptor instead. And uh, they get the solo pick on the enemy mid. Very nicely done. But I think the, the problem with the lone druid is going to 
you know, be similar to the Slark last game in some ways where, you know, he's not doing a lot of damage right now. It's easy to focus on other lanes with more critical heroes, but you let Lone Druid farm for another 15 minutes and holy moly, that's going to be difficult to deal with. Now, Bat goes in, wants to debut that funny little lasso. Does manage to get it off uh, at the same time as the Blade Fury, but now they've got a Centaur Stampede, they've got raises for days, and that is a dead jug out from the mid lane for 30 more seconds, so... Nana redeeming himself from that earlier uh, vendetta in the woods. Nice, nice. Denied. Get that regen rune. On to Exnova, and I still get to walk away. So, I saw the uh, the final invites are out. They're the exact eight I think most people expected. The, uh, I mean, maybe Wings. I'm sure some of you guys, especially here in the region, maybe a little disappointed that it's like Wings over some like TNC or something like that. But uh, this was definitely the, the more agreed upon one. And oh, you can even see all the regional stuff now, too. That's pretty cool. Didn't yep. even realize. Just one last plug if you want to go and hear some analysis on the invites and thoughts and stories and what's going on. We got What the Duck on Sir Action Slacks' channel. And that's Suns fan Ma Zayori and Slacks. So twitch.tv slash Sir Action Slacks. Give them a little love. They're up at uh, an early hour in the morning to talk about these awesome invites. But now back to Mr. Cat. Hey, Mr. Cat. Mr. Cat. This is our, our fifth game of Mr. Cat for the day. Uh, casting another best of five today, so voice box definitely gets a workout. <laughs> Easy. Mr. Cat. You got that. Easy. Dude, I did DPL for like 17 hours. I'm good. <laughs> All right, Ajit again, still farming completely uncontested in this bottom lane. Like he doesn't even, he doesn't need his bear. His bear's just chilling in the fountain. There he goes. But like this is, this is really scary. I look at this and you know, you see Maneski, they're doing all right. They're rotating. They're getting the kills they need to. The Nyx is scaling up well, but this lone druid I think is just going to be their demise. He goes in and might be able to find a kill on the centaur. Ben ults and will find his way away. Meanwhile, Nana gets a second chance running away from the Juggernaut as well, so double duty ult from the Centaur really saved two people there. I think, uh, uh caught out. That he had the best yeah. intentions of a lasso, but unfortunately just immediately dies. And that uh, was actually what I was about to bring up. That's the biggest problem I see with this draft. Um, not that it's a problem, I guess, but the biggest issue is that it's all on Afu. Like, he basically needs to be the one making these initiations. They have the help of the Centaur, which I think makes this support Batrider a lot more viable, because you can just blink Lasso, and since you're poor, you're not going to have four staff, but you can just Stampede instead. Uh, which is pretty great, but they uh, they need him to connect on all of these to make this draft work. These dire heroes creeping forward. Nana getting all territorial, trying to keep everyone off his tier ones, but looks like he's going to get rotated upon. They do have Afu back, still with the lasso, still with the blink. It looks like Batrider might get what he wants this time. Able to go find something, but he's still burning down. Afu gets very, very low. Nana, one hit from death. Can they find it? Rubik not able to hold back the Juggernaut. Now, Juggernaut himself is on the run. Ben looking for a nice little stamp there. Nah, he's Nova. Good. He's got some TP. He's got the telekinesis. Yeah, they can't cut through that magic community, though. That was actually close. <laughs> I got a little worried when he didn't start right away. His next level was kind of closing in, but he was really min max on that one. And uh, he makes his way out of there with 512 gold to his name and 1265 experience. Oh, solo kills. Mm. Feels good. That is a whole level. Puts him up to 12. Easy. And uh, a quick smoke here, too, as Vendetta's up and ready, and they want to go right towards this lone druid. And this is what we talk about. Like, it doesn't matter how farmed he is. He needs lassos and stuff, really, to be impactful in these fights. Oh! Oh, he's trying to be the bear! He died as the bear. That's, uh, that's what we talk about here. I'm thoroughly surprised as to why Crystal Maiden is not more valued in other regions. Here in SEA, she is just the playmaker. Her freeze, again, with the buffs to root, is so good. And, uh, well, we see there the, uh, good old freezing fields. Well, Make she's dead now, Andy. Well, Are you no, happy? Well, no, it's, it's Are not. Are you happy? She's Your standing fault. in fire, and she's literally made of ice. She's just melting. That's all it is. It's, it's what happens. But, yeah, it's, uh, 
Now get a little bit heated mid lane. Nana really trying to go focus down this tower. Meanwhile, Batrider just gets eaten. RR getting low, almost out of mana, almost out of health, but he's in this for the long run. Timbersaw now blasting forward, gets lifted up by the Rubik, but Miracle still ready to strike, has the Omni Slash, just has to get in range. They gotta slow down Nana somehow. Chakram's way to do that, but they do miss it, and there we go. Omni Slash clips, and they got the kill onto the Shadow Fiend. That's Miracle that gets the gold for it, another 300 in his pockets. And it's just Dire trying to run away from the Radiant right now. Timbersaw should be able to get out safely, although Bat's coming back in. He's got himself a blink lasso. All right, so they'll sack the Timbersaw. Still worthwhile. RR. Oh, look at that carapace, though. He's standing in the fire so he can kill off the little uh, bat there. Neat. That was close. Timber almost escaped there, but uh, a lucky uh, route for sure. They didn't get that. He uh, almost certainly would have lived. Definitely a nice play. Looking at the overall net worth, we're still pretty dead even. Overall levels starting to take a turn in favor of Maneski. Again, I think that's just because Warriors game and they're sticking so close together. They're not really splitting up and farming and raking in their individual levels. They're more unit focused. We'll see as uh, well, Ben's now got his little hood. The centaur's feeling pretty good about himself. Still saving for the blink. Needs like 20 more gold. He's almost there. That's going to be a centaur that's ready to go. Yeah, it takes a little bit longer, I think, just because obviously he gave away, like, what, five or six stacks or something of neutral camps to a, a bat rider in his lane. So despite his lane going somewhat well, especially considering the matchup, he's still a, uh, a slightly sad centaur. But he's back up now. He's at 16 minutes. He has blink, has hood. Not too shabby. Waiting for Nana to uh, get up to his max souls, and we might see a smoke play come out from them. Dire, Dire scan. scanning. I see that there's something going on mid. Someone's waiting in those trees now. There's a nice Radiant Ward here scouting out a lot of this rotation, so Radiant aren't in the dark either. Everyone very scared to make the first move, because like we've seen, Nyx, he can go in, he can make the plays. He can also just get lassoed and immediately killed. It's all about who gets the jump first. Are still not uh, able to find anything with it, I guess, for Vendez for a little while, but they uh, just continue the life. Uh, objectives this game, the Roshan, pretty important, of course. It's uh, more so, I would say, for the Radiant, just so Nana can do this a little bit safer once we get a little bit deeper into territory oh. of Tier 2s and whatnot. Ogre got the deny. He's feeling big about that. Now there's going to be a nice drag back down to the low ground. Easy pick onto the Nyx, just like we talked about there. Who gets off the initiation first? And looks like for now, Maneski are left running for the hills. RR just. That was a killing spree for him. How much gold did he give away? About 300 straight to the Shadow Fiend. Yeah, it's a good grab by Afu. If he doesn't grab the Bat Rider, or rather, if he doesn't grab the Nyx, he can't Firefly. So when you're scouting like that with Firefly, you essentially have to grab Nyx every time, or uh, you're just gonna get Carapus stopped. Deep movement in from the Timber Saw. They wanna keep this fight going, but. Is it really going to be enough Miracle Ooh. able to find something there? Gets the bat. Got mad blinks here as the Radiant. They're scrambling. The Dyer are coming for them. Got the Timbersaw. Very eager to toss out the Chakram and keep everyone zoned. Fortify comes out, but not going to last long enough to keep this baby up. All right. Man, they committed a hell of a lot for this minute. They like, need Roche or something with this buyback. I don't know. They need something big. I don't know if a tier one's really enough. It's a lot of gold to commit. Maybe they could do like a rap play and make them think they're coming into Roche. Ah, but the bear can just scout it. Kind of ruins those intentions. I feel like WG are going to know that they're camping in this area. It just makes sense. All right, so all oh, smokes oh, break. Dust sentries? No. Nope. There's sentries. It's just a little bit late. Shadow Fiend's walking around now. They're going to be going in. Miracle spinning. Ninja Boogie is ready to ult, but she's just burning so gosh darn quickly. Crystal Maiden's downfall is that she's just made of paper. Savage Roar actually helps out Maneski here. They're able to run, but Telekinesis and Drag back onto the Juggernaut. He's going to be going down as well. Maneski now trying to defend this. Two heroes down. We've got a very farmed lone druid ready to start nipping at your towers. Looks like oh, look radiant. at Afu too, up top. He didn't have to use the lasso just because he didn't actually have it when they stampeded. So he like blinked on top, but it was like two seconds on cooldown. And now he sits up here, puts down a sentry. Just uh, not only for the Nyx, but for 
wards to possibly spot him and easily guaranteed tower means Roche and uh, likely why you saw Mineski fight so hard for that tier 2 in the prior engagement knowing this would be the the next one that came for the Radiant. Yeah, net worth looking pretty good for, Manette, or for Warriors Gaming Unity right now. About 3,000 oh, in the close. lead. And this Roche, uh -huh. this Roche is definitely going to be a fun determining factor. Aegis goes the way of the Shadow Fiend and you can see immediately Mineski Hero is just scattering from the area. All right, well, they're uh, getting those initiations, so very well played from WG to keep this one rolling. And here we just, uh, again, look to use the Siege Engine of Nana. Maybe try and find a pick with his own Shadow Blade as uh, the stun does miss. Down bottom onto X Nova, Telekinesis, but no real concerns for either party as they just part ways. Got our 12 charge Bloodstone on our Timber Saw. We have still just Manta on Miracle. Been sitting on that for quite a while. Uh, hoping to get him into some sort of a damage item, I'm sure. And uh, group up smoke now for the Radiant. Everything up online. You done. Just look to find a lasso. Where's our Nyx Assassin? He's in the back lines here. But we'll see if they start with the Firefly or not. There we go. Nope. Lasso. They're just easily able to blast apart Miracle. That looked like it didn't even take effort. Now Timbersaw, he's tanky. Crystal Maiden's going to opt to ult here, but Flame Break doesn't disjoint. It just brings her closer to the damage. Did the job. Yeah, it, it did it. In the end, got it done. We got the Timbersaw as well. This is just the rest of Maneski scrambling. TP out by RR. Ogre beat him to it. Already hanging back near the base. So very well executed from Warriors game. And they went in, they had a plan, and they did the job. Honestly, like, that fight looks so easy, but it's all because Afu just hits that lasso, you know? Oh, yeah. Like, there's <laughs> there's not really much you can do when that happens, so well done again. Great combination once more using that uh, Centaur. And, in fact, Afu doesn't even feel the pressure to head in towards a Force Staff, at least not currently in his quick fight. He's just eyeing up towards the BKB. If I'm just going to have the Stampede every single time, there's not really a need for me to have this Force Staff. It's not going to make a, a big enough difference, so I appreciate that idea. Yeah, he can definitely close the distance on his own. It's all about survival now, so good choice in the BKB. Let's see who, uh, who else is building something interesting. Full Silver Edge finished up by the Shadow Fiend. He was sitting on the Shadow Blade just a moment ago, but cashed it all in. Now Dire, i ready to, to rumble. Oh, just yeah. after the Shrine's activated, too. This is going to hurt. Nyx is able to land a decent impale. The Omni Slash bouncing around isn't going to be enough. Jewel spraying out the Ignite. There's a Centaur ult to try to get all remaining heroes out of the fight. Respawn comes in. We are going to have our Shadow Fiend back in the fight. RR burning low. This Batrider, though, that's a big kill to get down. The Batrider's still alive. He makes it through the whole thing. Warriors Gaming are looking so strong. And now Ninja Boogie just... I mean, she's trying. Crystal Maiden's so gosh darn slow. She's going to go TP out. Oh, but... that was so close. He actually almost lived on Oh. Up. This Tranquils had just come back up on the Bat Rider. Like, so close to being able to survive through those Ignites, but uh, with the help of the stick. But he, he did go down first, uh, thanks to an urn, making sure he couldn't blink and whatnot and disjoint Ignites. But I mean, to be fair, I'll, I'll trade a Bat Rider for the whole enemy team any day. Yeah, I think that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it'll back, work. Um, Centaur. Oh. Yeah. Well, there was that at the very least. But, uh,. Yeah, that was uh, the Silver Edge really coming to play there. We often talk about how it's like a pseudo counter kind of the Timber, but that was a case where they came in smoked, he had zero reactive armor stacks, and he got broken. So that whole fight, he was sitting on one. Oh, okay, oh, so. Shadow Fiend, too cocky. He was going channeling up the cheeky Requiem, but was punished. That was a little bit unnecessary there from our Shadow Fiend, but, you know, they he went in. on the high ground, yeah. They got half a Rax. Still worthwhile. RR going to be chasing down X Nova, but the Invis rune snapped up means he's not going to be able to find that. We have no gems in the game, right? Bat and Nyx have not bought one. Oh, zero gems, sorry, did you say? I, I don't think so, unless I'm missing one. No, I don't think so. I haven't, I haven't spotted one. I feel like with the Nyx and all the really aggressive warding that's been going on, and now the Shadow Fiend uh, Silver Edge, that should be of some importance. Well, Afu's kind of hoping that uh, Bimbo's going to go a little bit deeper here, but not going to be the case. No TP assistance or anything like that going to be required. And yeah, he's just home. He's done. Not exactly sure what they're up to. Only Centaur showing top.
All right, so just like we saw in the previous games, these crazy, unbelievable team wipey fights, and then long stretches of calm as everyone just wants to reset. All right, uh, Andy, I'm on. I'm on your train right now. What? The gem. Like he just sentry there. This was from the fight, but then he just placed that. This one. Then he just placed this one, and he just placed this one. It's a little excessive, guys. Yeah, they're, one, they're, two, three, four. They're looking. <laughs> I feel like, yeah, that's like the value of a gem just about in the last minute. Um, it's understandable though, right? Like that's the play they have to make. Um, sadly, he's standing on top of an Observer Ward, so that would be really sad if he died right now. After all that effort. I thought you uh, meant you were on my train about Terrorblade being the best hero in Dota 2, and I got really no, excited. No, Crystal Main's the best hero in Dota 2. I'll stand by that. Yeah, she can make it work. Oh, map still firmly in the hands of Warriors Gaming. 10k lead. Waiting on the next Roshan here. Yeah, the fact they were able to go and bust up the tier 3s is super important. Now, Rosh is going to be up soon. Uh, and this top shrine hasn't been touched on the dire side. That's something Radiant probably want to go and, and at least make an effort on before Rosh fights break out. Because it's just so easy to TP to that shrine and then head right into the pit from there. The biggest thing from an SQ would just be, I mean, obviously all these sentries, I assume the reason is not only for the ward coverage, but what they really want to do is try and find Nana. Just doing his little scouting maneuvers, right, with the Shadow Blade getting a little bit greedy, trying to punish that. If they can, that would be just so huge for them. And, uh, oh man, that observer sentry combo. Mm. Spotting a Vendetta up on the high ground. Ping me. Which one? Ah. Oh. Boom. The deep and sitting here since the Rex. That is actually so much information. <laughs> Especially, the best is when it spots couriers. That is, like, the dream. And it sees, like, some courier, like, rotating back over this way or something. You can, like, spot where they are because of it. Nick's waiting up top. He's got a DD rune. He's been deaded up. But, uh, something's about to be seen as he sees this being dewarded. There's going to be some mad pings about they no RR. Century. They want to go in. Impale misses, though. And that's just going to be forced disengage. Nana does get credit for the tower as no one from Mineski is able to deny, so more and more money keeps on flowing to WG. Oh, that would have been such a great time to fight before the BKB was there, but couldn't quite find their moment. Oh, they're smoking up. This is going to be their moment. They're taking it. They're seizing it, and they want it to happen. Crystal Maiden's going to be a real easy pick if they can get eyes on her. She's going to oh, go down. Oh, they see her. They still have that ward. She places a sentry. They just sentry. don't want to waste it on her. They, they want the bigger fish. They're looking, but they may have missed their shot. They're just going to go straight for the shrine, like we talked about. Shrine into Roche would be a great play here, and if they can actually find a fight, if Mineski try to take this and you know don't get the engage just right, that's going to be more and more blood going for Warriors Gaiman. Yeah, they're just pinging bottom Roche now, too. Or, sorry, bottom shrine. <laughs> We're very tired. Yeah. No, uh, two, 220? Okay, not bad. Pretty like good for Mineski, I would say. If you watch this cast, and then you watch the first cast of the day, there's a marked difference in energy. It's okay, Annie. <laughs> Fake it till you make it. I'm faking it, man. All right, Nana's going in. Went to the mid lane. Killed those creeps real good. Nice. You, you got it. That was it right there. <laughs> Professional caster, ladies and gentlemen. All right. For reals, though, we got Maneski rotating down to the bot lane. They're going to make a stab at this tier 2. There is going to be a scan from the Radiant, and it's going to end just before the Dire walked into it. That was, like, tragically close to revealing all of the Dire. Uh, but Radiant still uh, still hunting for information on what's going down. Dire are going to be scanning behind this tower, making sure no one's waiting on the low ground to jump them. But looks like they're just going to calm it down, maybe send some Jug Illusions to hit on the tower. But I guess they were just trying to bait some TPs, bait some initiations, and... They're content with getting out unscathed. I mean, you look at their map, and it is just... It's no. just dark. That's what they see. Yeah, currently <laughs> currently, this is what uh, Dire have eyes on, and this is what Radiant have eyes on. Definitely a lot more information going towards the green side. Crazy this ward lived the entire time. Uh, yeah, it's just it's so early in the game to have that down. Usually, when there is a high ground push, you try to deward that, but must have slipped the mind. I mean, they're just spending sentries everywhere, too, so it's difficult yeah. to keep it all. I feel like the amount of sentries bot has got equal, like, three gems now in terms of price. But holding a gem, still a scary thought. We've seen Maneski be fully wiped before, so 
Oh, some... they actually did buy one. Oh, oh wait, never mind. Sorry. Never mind. That was my mistake. It's the radiant one. I thought it was a dire one for a second, but Afu is just holding on to it. And so if they can get that grab, I mean, it is, again, they have a Nyx versus Batrider, oh, so oh. certainly possible. RR. Sure would love to find this, but Afu got that gem. Not going to get snuck up on anymore. He's going to go ahead. BKB, he's going to turn this around. He's going to lasso Nana, channeling up the Requiem, finally gets it off. And they've got the blood. There we go. Nyx Assassin held in the air. Crystal Maiden goes deep. She's able to ult, but just raking it in from Warriors Gaming Unity. They're continuing to press forward. Afu having to deal with a Juggernaut head on, but doesn't seem too scared. Nice blink stomp in from Ben. Finds out the Timber Saw. He's going to be able to Timber Chain away, but Jules, what are you doing, Ogre? That's not the place for you. He dies a That's lot. That's a uh, air quotes support bat rider right there. Yeah. BKB of 30 minutes. It's pretty strong stuff up against Nick Assassin, the only counter that they have. When you, these counters that are focused solely on the actual Batrider and not saving the hero themselves, like think about your Venge or your Oracle or something like that, the character just be completely worthless at this point now. Because you can just always BKB and jump in and they have nothing to do against that besides maybe Omni Slash and kill them just simply if it would be enough damage. So, Afu played a fantastic game so far. I do really think a lot of the burden was on him for these initiations and him and Ben just syncing up the jumps, the lassos, and then the uh, stampedes back have looked great. He's eyeing for it again. He has lasso back online. Yeah, I mean, I think this is Maneski trying to make a hold, trying to think about do we even engage here? And Batrider, he's got to be so tempted just to jump forward and see what's there. Again, this gem is, is paid off tenfold. Nice, nice BKB again. reaction. Beautifully timed. They got Juggernaut. They hold him in place. The GG comes out as Maneski just feel outdone, out-rotated, out-initiated by Warriors gaining Unity, who will be moving on in this tournament. Very well played. Great, great use of the support it's Batrider. Something that um, popped Warriors up in China for a while, unit. but... That uh, seen it come back very strong. I don't think I've seen WG actually do that anytime lately. So nice job bringing it back again, showing the power of Centaur Warrunner. He had two of his best friends in this draft too, with the Lone Druid and the uh, the Bat Rider. But it really was just kind of that Afu setup, right? He just let Lone Druid and Shadow Fiend just go to town, wail away. Exceptionally played here by WG, a well deserved victory. Absolutely, we saw some quality games this morning, but that was a. Uh... One of the best in terms of, you know, very calm, very relaxed, and then all of a sudden just team wipes, towers, blood, carnage. Love it. Well, that's going to do it for Mr. Cat today. Uh, are we are we saying goodbye to Maneski? Are they out? We are. That is the end. Aww. It's uh, eliminated. Bye, Maneski. That means Warriors Gaming will be moving on to uh, face up in the lower bracket semi-final against geek fam and then that'll be the lower bracket final against clutch gamers uh to the winner of that and both of those will take place tomorrow march 4th so it'll be a double header for that team running the gauntlet between geek fam and then clutch gamers so warriors gaming they uh gotta have that victory absolutely so stick around more mr cat coming at you tomorrow uh, if you're in mountain time lovely 3 a.m we're gonna kick that on pacific coast of the u.s is gonna be 2 a.m so might even just stay up for that one. Uh, and East Coast is 5 a.m. So nice early morning Dota. You can catch a little bit before you head off to work or class or whatever. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, I'm Android. That's Trent. You can follow me at Android on Twitter. Him at Trent Pax. And uh, yeah, feedback always welcome. But hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, there is going to be the show match starting in two, three, two hours? Less than that? And that's going to be a, uh, a very interesting game to watch. So stick around on the Moonduck channel. Check back in a couple of hours and see what's going down here. And uh, have a great day, everyone. Woo!